Alrighty, today we're gonna to be talking about balancing chemical reactions, and this is a big deal for chemistry. So this is important to pay attention to and to really make sure that you get a hold of. Alrighty, so I'm sorry that that's kind of out of the way. Let me make sure that that's as far away out of the way as possible. All right, so the law of conservation of mass and balancing equations. So one of the things to remember in the world is that we have the law of the conservation of mass and the conservation of energy. And the law of conservation of mass says that matter cannot be created or destroyed. We can apply this to balancing chemi chemical equations by remembering that matter in chemical reactions is neither created nor destroyed during a reaction. Therefore, all the different atoms that were present at the start of the reaction must be present at the end of the reaction. So if you have sodium, chlorine, and hydrogen at the beginning of the reaction, you have to have sodium, chlorine, and hydrogen at the end of the reaction. It doesn't matter what order or arrangement they're in, so long as those elements and that matter is still there. It doesn't just disappear, okay? Now this is the key part to balancing chemical reactions, is that not only must all those elements or atoms be present, but the number of atoms of each element must be the same before and after a chemical reaction. You need to start out and end up with the same number of atoms of each element. So not only do you have to have sodium, chlorine, and hydrogen, but if you start out with six sodiums, six chlorines, and three hydrogens, you need to end up with six sodiums, six chlorines, and three hydrogens, okay? So not only do you have to have the same elements, on the left and right side of the reaction equation or at the beginning and end of the reaction, but you have to have the same number of hydrogens or the same number of each element on the left and the right side of the reaction or the start and the end of the reaction. Okay, this is the big deal. It all has to balance out. When we say balancing reactions, we're talking about the left side and the right side or the start and the end or the products and the reactants. Okay, or I guess, to be proper, it would be the reactants and the products, the left and the right, okay? What you start out with, you have to end up with. So, balancing. Coefficients are used in chemical equations to balance an equation. Coefficients are the large numbers that appear before the compound they describe. We're not talking about subscripts, which are the small numbers that are after or in between elements in a compound. I'm talking about the large numbers before. Subscripts, which are the small numbers, cannot be changed once the compound is written, as changing the subscript changes the compound. I cannot say H2O and then write H3O. H2O and H3O are two totally different substances. They're different compounds. But if I have three H2Os, I could write four H2Os, depending on the situation, okay? The big number, the coefficient in a, in a chemical reaction can be changed. The subscript cannot, that changes the compound. That's a key thing to remember here. So for example, calcium plus oxygen yields calcium oxide, or Ca plus O2 yielding CaO, okay? I cannot change the two that comes after that oxygen. I cannot. Oxygen is a diatomic. When it's by itself, it's found as O2. I cannot change that number. But leaving it as it is says that I have one calcium and two oxygens to start out with and only one calcium and one oxygen to end up with, which is not true. So in order to make this true, we balance the reaction using coefficients. So if I have two um, oxygens on the left, I'm gonna need two oxygens on the right. Now I cannot change co the subscripts, so I can't just add a little two next to that oxygen. It's not the same compound, and for instance, in an ionic compound like that, it's not a balanced compound anymore either. So the only thing I can do is add coefficients. I can add big numbers before the compound. So I can add a two in front of that CaO on the right-hand side of the equation. But if I add a two in front, that applies to the, ca the calcium as well as the oxygen. So then I'm gonna need to add a two in front of just the regular calcium on the left so that I would have two Ca plus O2 yields two CaO, okay? 
The coefficient of 2 is placed in front of both the calcium oxide and, sorry, that's supposed to be the calcium, to balance the equation. The same number of each element then appear on both sides of the equation. So CaO2 yielding CaO becomes 2Ca plus O2 yielding 2CaO, okay? We put the 2 in front of the CaO to balance out the oxygens on the left, and then by putting the 2 in front of the CaO, we now have 2 CaS, so we have to have a, a 2 in front of the Ca. Okay, that's the basics of balancing. So here are the steps to balancing chemical equations. The first step is to write the formula equation with the correct chemical formula and phases. So given the reaction, you're going to write the chemical formula out with the correct chemical formulas and phases. So not only are you gonna have the correct balanced chemical compounds, but we need to know what phases they're in as well. So for example, sodium plus chlorine goes to NaCl. So sodium is a solid, chlorine is a diatomic gas, so it has to be written as Cl2 gas, and then we're gonna yield sodium chloride, which is also a solid in this situation, okay? So we have to have balanced chemical formulas for everything. The Na is by itself, Cl is a diatomic, so it has to be Cl2. And then sodium and chlorine, when they combine, sodium is a 1 plus, chlorine is a 1 minus. So you just need one of each to react together to make a balanced compound, so NaCl. The next one thing you're going to do is count the number of atoms of each element on the two sides of the equation. So on the left side, I have one sodium and two chlorines. On the right hand side, I have one sodium and one chlorine. Looking at that, we need to then balance the number of atoms of each element by using coefficients. So if I have two chlorines on the left and only one chlorine on the right, I need to add a coefficient of two in front of NaCl to add, indicate two chlorines. But once I do that, when I count again, now I have one sodium on the left, two chlorines on the right, two, chlo two sodiums on the, on the, sorry, one sodium and two chlorines on the left and two sodiums and two chlorines on the right. This isn't balanced still because now the sodium's out of whack. So I'm gonna need to put a coefficient of two in front of the sodium as well. So NaCl2, I add a two in front of the NaCl. That balances out the chlorines, but now I need to add a two in front of the Na to balance it on all sides. Check your work by counting atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. You're always gonna do this for the entire time just because you wanna double check left and right, do I have it balanced, or beginning and end. All right, I want you guys to do some practice. That's really, honestly, those steps, that's it. That's all you have to do. So you may wanna pause and write these down, but that's it. So we're gonna practice now. So after you've paused and written this down, we're gonna do some practice. So sodium phosphate is used to cut grease in soaps. Write a balanced equation for the reaction in which iron 2 chloride reacts with sodium phosphate to produce sodium chloride and iron 2 phosphate. So here we're given the reactants of iron 2 chloride and sodium phosphate, and we're given the products of sodium chloride and iron 2 phosphate. So I would need to write out all of my reactants and all of my products as balanced, balanced compounds. So iron to chloride becomes FeCl2. And we're gonna assume because of the situation that we're looking at, we're looking at a double displacement, we need to have these in aqueous solution. And I didn't say anything about solid iron to chloride. So typically most reactions that we're looking at are in aqueous solutions. So FeCl2 aqueous plus Na3PO4, Na is a one plus, PO4 is a three minus. So we need three Na's for every one PO4. And then we're gonna make iron two phosphate with phosphate being a three minus and iron two being a two plus. We're gonna need three irons and two phosphates. And then sodium chloride, sodium's a one plus, chlorine's a one minus, they balance each other out. Now, I hope that you guys can pause this and I want you to double check your work. I want you to count and balance using coefficients, balance this reaction, okay? Do it by yourself before you press play. So for balancing this out, on the left-hand side, I have one iron. On the right-hand side, I have three irons. So I know that I'm gonna need to put a three in front of the FeCl2, okay? So that's the first thing I would do, is put a three in front of the FeCl2. The next thing I would do then is when I put a three in front of the FeCl2, I know now that I have six chlorines. 
on the right hand side I only have one chlorine so I'm going to put a six in front of the NaCl on the right hand side that would give me six chlorines then when I look back over here I see on the left hand side that I only have three sodiums and on the right hand side with that new six coefficient I'm going to have six sodiums so I'm going to need to put a two in front of Na3PO4 to make two times three equal to six so I'd have six um, sodiums but putting the two in front of Na3PO4 now gives me two PO4s. Now here you need to really remember that your polyatomics and remember that those cannot be separated up. So I don't have two phosphorates and eight, or two phosphoruses and eight oxygens. I have two PO4s. And so then on my right hand side, oh look, I already have two PO4, PO4s. So looks like we're balanced by adding a three in front of FeCl2, a two in front of Na3PO4, and then a six in front of NaCl, we balance out. And so let's double check. On the left, we have three irons. On the right, we have three irons. On the left, we have three times two is six chlorines. On the right, we have six chlorines. On the left, we have two times three is six sodiums. On the right, we have six sodiums. And two times nothing is two phosphates. On the right, we have two phosphates. All right, I want you to do the next reaction where we re re react chlorine with lithium bromide to produce lithium chloride and bromine. Okay, so we're doing a single displacement reaction here. Um, excuse me, I want you to pause the video, write out the equation and balance it, and then double check back with me. So if we're gonna write out our reactions, our reactants, we have chlorine and lithium bromide. Chlorine is a diatomic, so it's gonna be Cl2, and it's a gas. Plus lithium bromide, L lithium is a one plus, bromine is a one minus, so it's just gonna be LiBr. And we're producing lithium chloride, Lithium is a one plus, chlorine is a one minus, so it's just gonna be LiCl, and bromine, which bromine is a diatomic as well, so we're gonna yield Br2. So those are our balanced compounds, not our balanced reaction. So when we look at that, we can see that on the left we have two chlorines, on the right we have one, so we're gonna put a coefficient two in front of lithium, and then when we look on the left we have one bromine, two bromines on the right, so we're gonna need to put a two in front of lithium bromide, and oh look, now we have two lithiums on the left, two lithiums on the right. And so it's all gonna balance out. So we double check again, two chlorines, two chlorines, two lithiums, two lithiums, two bromines, two bromines, and it's all nice and balanced. We're gonna do a little bit more practice. And by a little bit, I mean a ton more practice in class. I'll even go through a few examples so that you can see more easily me working it out by hand. But I wanted you guys to get thinking about how we do this and start thinking in your mind about the basics of balancing reactions, and we're going to spend a few days working on that. So I hope you guys have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.